Hi everyone, I wanted to provide a brief update today. There is new important information I wanted to share and I wanted to get out quickly. Uh, there is a, a, a significant development uh, in the same line of work that I presented uh, in the uh, last interview with Grant Cameron. So um, here it is. So we see a bit on the screen here the title, uh, Planck Length Solution Based on Harmonic 144 and the Golden uh, Ratio. <clears throat> so this is the development, uh, very significant development, because one of the link uh, that's very useful and will be powerful to have is harmonic, you know, linking the harmonic mathematics, and especially the fundamental harmonic of light, 144 and the 432, which is the third harmonic of 144, and the golden ratio. So linking these harmonic to the actual quantum world. So um, without uh, going further, um, before going further with this, uh, let me uh, describe briefly what the Planck length uh, represents. And so I do have a, a short video clip here that explain the significance of the Planck length in the, in the quantum physics. It's very, very significant. And uh, so let me play the video here and then we'll get back to the slide in a minute. So here it is. Scientists have already discovered the pixel sized building block of our universe, which is known as the Planck length the smallest possible size for anything in our universe. It is at this point at whereby the rules of gravity and spacetime are no longer applicable. In our matrix simulation, this Planck length can be considered as one single pixel, as it is the tiniest amount which can be quantified. In the 1890s, Max Planck the renowned physicist suggested a set of units to streamline the representation of physics laws by applying the five constants in nature such as the speed of light, the gravitational constant and Planck constant. Quarks and leptons are the building blocks of matter and incredibly tiny less than a billionth of a billionth of a meter in diameter. If zooming further, a billion times more, beyond zeptometers and yoctometers, a hundred million times smaller still, and eventually reaching the end will be the Planck length. Nothing beyond this point will be visible as everything is energy, and nothing is physical. The scale of a Planck length which is represented by 1.6 by 10 to the power of 35 meters, is the smallest thing that can be measured in our world and for comparison purposes it is 100 million trillion times smaller than a proton. The Planck scale was devised as a set of universal units but also represent the boundaries of the known laws of physics. Any space smaller than the Planck length does not work as the physics completely break down. At the Planck scale, physicists theorize the four fundamental forces, gravity, the weak force, electromagnetism, and the strong force unite into a single force of energy. Okay, so uh, again, this video is open source, obviously. And so, um, so the Planck length really represents the tiniest thing that can exist really, uh, you know, at a quantum level. And so this is the fundamental, one of the fundamental building block, uh, you know, in our universe very clearly. And so, um, so here's the development. So I found out that the Planck length itself, once we convert the length into the nautical mile scale, and if you recall, when I, I present, I explained that in, um, you know, in the last interview with Grant Cameron. Uh, and let me show you here. I do have a slide, right? So, you know, why are we using the nautical mile? Is because the nautical miles links the sacred geometry of a circle to the physical world we live in, right? And so, for instance, there are, um, you know, 360 meridians, uh, you know, circling the globe, and there are 60 minutes of arc per meridian, right? So in terms of circle. And so in terms of the nautical mile system has been developed to match that. So there are 360 degrees in a circle and there are 60 uh, degrees in a minute, minute, minute of arc. And so we end up with 21,600 nautical miles equals 21,600 minute of arcs. So it's connected together and using this proper scale to link the geometry to uh, the harmonic mathematics. Sorry here. So we get that. Uh, we get essentially um, that the Planck length, once it is converted from, uh, if we see here from kilometers, right, 1.616255 uh, kil at minus 38 kilometers, once we um, represent that into or convert that into nautical miles, we get 
this figure here, 0 0.872708 times 10 at the minus 38, right? So this is the figure we get in terms of nautical mile. This is the theoretical uh, Planck length that, you know, if you go anywhere and Google or go any table, physics table, you can find these figures, right? And you can make conversion pretty easily. So what I found is that the fundamental, harmon uh, fundamental harmonic of light, 144, times the golden ratio square divided by the 432, which all we're all very, uh, you know, aware of the significance of 432, we end up, and we see here at the bottom, we end up with a figure that match very nicely, exactly the, the uh, theoretical value. So the match is at 99.996% between, again, the theoretical Planck length and the Planck length calculated using the harmonics that I described here, this fundamental harmonics. Now, obviously, we can reduce and simplify this equation a little bit, right? 144 divided by 432, it's one third, right? Because 432 is exactly three times the product of 144. So we can simplify, essentially, one third becomes essentially the Planck length, once expressed in terms of harmonic mathematics, can be reduced to the, the golden ratio squared divided by three. And this is the beauty of it because it's so simple that the simplicity of it makes it, I think, really nice. And so let me, uh, let, let's calculate it. I want to show here uh, exactly the truth about it. Okay, so let's calculate it here on the machine. Uh, let me just uh, get the standard thing here going. Okay, so let's take, we say here in this, uh, let me make it smaller so we can see what we're doing here. Give me a second. Here we go. Okay, so we say that the formula is 144 times the golden ratio square divided by 432. So let's do it. Okay, so let's do the go first. The golden uh, the golden ratio is, and I will calculate it with all the decimals. So it's root five plus one divided by two. Okay, so we don't need to pay attention to this right now. Okay, so this is the golden ratio with a lot of decimals here. Okay, 1.618, which we're familiar with that, but there's a bunch of decimals after that. Now, if we follow this, the formula, we see the golden ratio here, right? And we square it. So let's square it. Now it's squared, so we get 2.618. Multiply or times 144, so let's do it, times 144. And then we divide by 432. We get 0 0.8726779, which is exactly the figure here that's rounded, whoops, here we go. You see here the figure? This is what we got. We just saw it on the calculator machine. So it's exact. So once we round it to the six digit, um, essentially we have an, a match of 99.996%. <clears throat> this is so, so significant. Uh, I'm still uh, you know, processing that information. But again, this, this correlation, this link of harmonic mathematics and these fundamental harmonics, light harmonics to the quantum world is going to open the door to a tremendous amount of possibilities. Uh, I'm very, very excited about this. This is a, a big news. And there's a picture that emerges also, right? Because if we go, uh, if you recall what I presented a few days ago, is that the, the earth grid itself, the lattice of the earth grid, are based upon golden ratio times harmonic 144. Right, and this is again in nautical miles that we see at the bottom here. Right, golden ratio times 144 gives 233 nautical miles. So these are the lattice, lattices of the Earth grid. Now, if we turn this or convert this nautical miles into kilometers, interestingly, we get 432. Very, very interesting. Right, so we get all these numbers coming over and over again. The, the famous light harmonic 144, which is everywhere in nature in in you know universe. And, and this famous harmonic 144, 432. We saw also that even uh, this, these principles, like the, for instance, the average distances of the planets in our solar system, so their average distance to the sun are all golden ratio proportions, exactly. We see here the match. You see 36 uh, golden ratio uh, for Venus, the Earth is 50, and so on. So we see this golden ratio here at very high accuracy. Again, the match is perfect. I mean, perfect, not perfect, but very, very, very good accuracy. 99.9% and above in all cases. And we even saw that also, I explained that, that the even the, the, the velocity of the galaxies uh, follow 
disharmonic mathematics, right? So our own Milky Way is going at twice the speed of light in terms of harmonic mathematics, right? 288 is exactly two times 144. 144 uh, nautical miles per grid second is the speed of light expressed in terms of harmonic mathematics, right? And so we see the Andromeda galaxies is going at exactly 144 and the Pleiades 2.88, which is a perfect harmonic of 144. So this is very significant. And we see the spectra emerging, you know, uh, in past presentations, I show how these two harmonics, also 432 and 144, leads to the speed of light at extremely high accuracy. You see 99.99978. On 144.1 here, there's a 0.1, it's a bit more accurate, and that's a frequency, as you know, that I've been, I've been using to uh, make contact with non-human intelligences. And we see how this number percolates, again, this fundamental harmonic where we show, we can see here how the mass of the proton can be obtained from 144. Same mass of the electron here. It's a different slide and we see the relationships. I'm not gonna go through the mathematics of it because we're gonna talk about it in a, you know, a longer update, but I wanted to give a brief idea here. Even a Schumann resonance, as we saw, can be calculated accurately with these harmonics, right? If we take the 432, and we divide by 144.1, and, and we divide by the Earth diameter, because the Earth is like an antenna, like the DNA is an antenna. We get 23.5, and that's a famous number that we've seen many times. That's very significant, right? 23.5, exactly. And if we divide by the third harmonic, we get the Schumann resonance, 7.83. It's represented a bit differently here, right? You see the 23.5 that we get through harmonic is 7.83. And this is a fractal, right? If we do a Fibonacci fractal with these frequencies, we end up, uh, and starting with the Schumann resonance, we end up with this famous 23.5 again. So it's all connected. And so, so we see a picture again that these numbers, these harmonics are really the building block of our world, of our material world. And totally active, obviously, in the quantum world. We saw in the past presentation, even that the 144 is part of the flower of life, right? There are 144 components in the flower of life. So this really creation at the quantum level operates, you know, using these harmonics. And I'm bringing, I'm bringing this back a bit to this triangular craft. If you recall, um, I, I was inspired and, and again, uh, with this uh, latest uh, development, uh, you know, this, uh, these three different sightings uh, that I experienced uh, recently, one was on December 5th here, the first one, and then on uh, December 25th, and then on February 5th, and if, if you saw what I explained in the uh, recent uh, presentation, this shape, this, this particular shape of triangular shape is very unique in the universe, where if we divide any side of this triangle by any other side, we always either get the golden ratio or the golden ratio square, right? So we presented that. And so there are clues here that were given to us, the importance of the golden ratio and the golden ratio square. And interestingly, if we think about it, right, if we go back to the, uh, again, to this, um, yeah, let me go to this one here, not this one, hold on. If I go back to the beginning here, um, if we look at the formula that enables this correlation or this link between the harmonic mathematics and the Planck length, we're looking at the golden ratio square divided by three. It's interesting that the golden triangular craft has obviously three sides and they were all uh, proportionate in terms of golden ratio and golden ratio square. And that's exactly what's involved here in these formulas. And we even saw from the past, right, as mentioned, also the golden ratio alone with the harmonic of light 144 was a key to understanding the, the earth grid. And there's a lot more work to be done on this, by the way. This is just the beginning. We're just opening up uh, the door to so much. Uh, but again, this, this, the importance of this golden ratio and these harmonics um, clearly were um, communicated, you know, through these sightings. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna end actually the uh, the presentation here uh, with this um, the short video uh, of these actual actual. Um, uh, sightings uh, that I experienced recently, and um, and I will conclude with that. So I just wanted again to, to give this brief update. I uh, apologize if it's a bit quick, and we'll go. You know, I'm not taking the time to explain a lot, but I just wanted to give the the main uh, you know the main lines. And so um, 
you know, there's going to be a, a, a not, another update uh, coming up at some point soon, and we'll go through that in more detail. Okay, so thanks everyone, and uh, I, let, I will uh, go with this. Uh, let me transition to this video here to finish, and so I will start here. And after this uh, video, I will uh, I will uh, stop the recording. Okay, thanks everyone.